Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. For no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the Spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Through these words, our God is still speaking. Thanks be to our still speaking God. You may see. Well, it is the Sunday after Pentecost. It is a high holy day in the church. Vestments are white, a day of celebration. It is Trinity Sunday. A Sunday which, okay, I really dread. <laughs> Talking about the Trinity is not what I enjoy doing. It is what in the church is called a mystery. Now, a mystery is not like a mystery novel. A mystery in the church is something that you can't figure out. There is no answer. It just is. And that's it. And so, I, I usually take the coward's way out and say, so it's a mystery. <laughs> there you go. Don't need to explain it because you can't. But, the Trinity theology got started because Christianity came to birth in Judaism, where there is only one God. So you can't just pop a couple extra gods in there. It's one God. But yet, those disciples and who were going around with Jesus said, you know, when we're with Jesus, it's just like being with God. It's like going to temple to go and hear Jesus speak. And after the crucifixion and the resurrection, 
and the day of Pentecost, they still felt that presence. There was a spirit among them, and they said, it's just like when Jesus was here. And out of that experience, they tried to explain it. And, of course, they couldn't. So the thing for us to do, I want to suggest, is to go back to that experience. How do we go back to the experience of God? And understanding that as how we get a hold of this thing called the Trinity. That we can make up all kinds of symbols for and we can do all kinds of, uh, it, it's kind of like, but it's always kind of like. It's never exactly alike because it's a mystery. There's a benediction that we do in the church. The love of God and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forever. That is my Trinitarian sermon today. <laughs> that what we have to do is begin to understand that we experience love as a gift from God. This is the very nature of God. God is love. And though people struggled with who God was, and we get some uh, really violent uh, stories in Scripture, um, when it comes down to it, the truth is that God is love. Whether we understand that very well or not, that is the truth. God is love. And as we experience love, as we reach out to God and allow God to reach us and to hold us, we experience that love. Jesus talked about it as being born from above. Nicodemus didn't understand it because he wasn't speaking English, you understand. It was, uh, so it's very clear, being born from above and being born again, that's, that's different. But in Hebrew and Aramaic, uh, which would have been the language of Jesus, uh, those words are basically the same. Uh, the beginning of the year is the head of the year, the top of the year. It's like in a show or a musical group when you say, let's take it from the top. You mean, let's do it again. But you say top. Is that. So it's that kind of language that Nicodemus doesn't understand. He gets confused. But Jesus is saying we need to draw our life from God. That is where life comes from. And that is what we have to do. We have to understand love. And through Jesus Christ we understand grace. You know, some people complain I didn't get what I deserve. Well, let's face it, folks. For the most part, we can thank God if we don't get what we deserve. <laughs> Especially when we talk about our relationship with God. Most of us have fallen short in who we ought to be. And grace should be something we are very grateful for. It's that forgiveness. When forgiveness isn't earned, isn't deserved. I, you know, the, 
the trouble with preaching for so long is that those great illustrations that I used to use don't make any sense anymore. You know, I was I was uh, talking to a mother and her daughter, and uh, we were talking about how we say things, and we were talking about the wedding service and how that works out. But I said, you know. We used to say that if somebody was chatty, they were vaccinated with a phonograph needle. <laughs> People don't know vaccinations given that way anymore, you know, where they'd scratch you with that needle and put the stuff on it. And they don't know what a phonograph is. They don't know what a phonograph needle is. They don't understand 33, 45, and 78. They just look at you like you're nuts. What are you talking about? All that stuff that goes out. You know, there was a, there was a, a time when the, the saying was, I don't think so, when you were objecting to things. And, and I always said that, you know, if we do not follow God's instructions to the letter all the time, we are, in effect, looking into the face of God and saying, I don't think so. <laughs> so, be thankful you don't get what you deserve. You get grace instead. Grace that we then, through the Spirit, who gives communion, not only with God and Jesus and the Spirit itself, but with one another, spreads that grace among us. So we forgive people. But people who are nice to us? No, our enemies. The people that are mean to us. People that talk behind our backs. We forgive them. Because that's the nature of God and that's who we are created in the image of. It's whose life is within us. So we are called to experience the Trinity, not to understand it, but to experience it. As we experience this great love of God, as we experience the grace, as we experience the communion of living in a place where that love and that grace just flows freely, it's not an easy life. You don't have to read the Gospels very far to know that Jesus didn't have an easy time of it. Yet on the cross, he forgave those who nailed him there. After the resurrection, he greeted Peter and ate with him and welcomed him into the fellowship together, even though he had denied him and all of them had deserted him. That's the kind of love and grace. In the church, we don't need to ask who's in charge. The Lord of the church is in charge. We just need to remember that. And to reach out for that love and to experience that grace both as a recipient and as a giver of it. So that we then experience communion community, being together, coming into unity. That's who we are. And it's the only way for the church to be. If that's not who we are and how we act, then we are not the church. So you're still looking for a settled pastor. And you always, year by year, are looking for people to lead you. 
In doing that, you are trying to remember that Jesus is the Lord of the church. And who you need in any type of leadership, whether it's pastoral or local lay people, are people who know that and help that take place. Not necessarily the smartest people in terms of education and those things, but people who know the love of God and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the communion of the Holy Spirit and are willing to share that and willing to say, this is what's most important because this is who we are. If you do that in your personal life, in your family, in this church, you will be successful. I don't know what that success will look like. I don't know how it will pan out. But I know that God will bless that. Because that is God's desire. That is who God is. And that is who you are. Amen.